Hey y'all, I'm Jules. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me as always is Kelly Sparta. Hey Kelly, what's up? Hey Jules. Uh, well, so uh, I host karaoke here in Boquete. I was asked well, okay. by a bar owner to, he's like, oh, you want to host a karaoke night? And I thought he meant one night. And it turns out he meant every week. <laughs> so, you got a sad gig. <laughs> so I got a little side hustle, right? But, um, <laughs> but basically what it means is that I go and for three hours on a Monday night, I host the karaoke, right? Now, I love karaoke. So for me, this is a passion project, right? I, I have been a fan of karaoke for forever because I love to sing and all of that. But this is my space to build, right? And they were just starting it. And so it's me and this DJ who is lovely. I don't get to talk to him a lot because he only speaks Spanish. And so if I really need to say something complex, his girlfriend translates. But um, okay. I was going to so say Google speaks, Translate. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, he speaks like no, no English and I speak a little bit of Spanish. And so, you know, he's a lovely human, but I don't know much about him. But the... Um, the upshot is that I'm creating this space, right? And so space engineering, right? With This is part of what we do energetically. Yeah. And it was so funny last night because it was like the third or fourth time we've done it, right? And I, I, I created the space in the way that I normally do, which is just like I open up in my joy and my welcoming and my unconditional love. And I'm like, yay, you're here. I'm so excited to see you. Ah! Right? And this, one of these, uh, one of the patrons, Panamanian, um, he just, he kept saying it over and over again all night long. He's like, your energy is just so, and he didn't have the words for it because he's, he doesn't speak a great amount of English and I wouldn't understand the Spanish because it's a, probably a complex concept for him, but I'm not sure if he would have a complex concept for me, not for him. Uh, in Spanish, right? Uh, but I, I, I'm not sure he would have had the language for it anyway. Because really what he was, he, he was like, oh my God, your energy is so amazing. The energy is so great. The energy, your energy, your energy, your energy. And I'm like, yeah, I know, baby. I know. <laughs> like, I'm doing it on purpose. <laughs> like awful. I'm just stepping into my joy and my welcoming and my happiness that we're all here together making music and having a good time and just, you know, enjoying ourselves. Right. And, and he's just like, you know, you could tell that it's, it's not an energy he's used to. And he's just, he was just drawn to it. He could, you could, he could feel it. And he's just like, he was like more, he was more, talking to me more. all night. Right. It was, it was great. Even when his girlfriend came, he came and danced with me. Right. <laughs> she was singing to be fair, but, you know, um, but you know, all of these things, right. It's just when you, when you can find your joy, when you can find your passion, when you can find your openness and unconditionally loving space, you are unbelievably attractive to others. Right. And, and that's really yeah. what this was. Right. And, you know, I had multiple people come up to me last night and be like, wow, that was really cool. Wow. I just, I didn't get this bar before, but now I do. Now I get it. Now I get what you're, what the, what the, the concept is, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it, everybody thinks I'm the owner. They all come in and, oh, is this your bar? And I'm like, no, I'm just a karaoke host. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just here one night a week, <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's fun. It's so a great do you time, notice, but do you notice your in, yeah. the, the energy on other nights? If you go there and you're not doing karaoke, it's very it's, different energy. It's a very different energy, right? Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. So it's something new, something fresh. And they were just like, what is this? I want more. <laughs> and they're like, Ooh, it's a Monday night. There's nothing to do on Mondays. I love this. And one of the guys there runs one of the other bars in the area. And he's like, this is my Friday night. He's like, I'm so excited. There's something to do. I'll be here every time. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Because he runs one of the other bars. And he does Friday and Saturday and Sunday night stuff in his bar. And he doesn't have anything to do on Mondays because basically the town rolls up. Right? Right. So we're like the only game in town. So it's, it's, it's growing. It's nice. And y'all went but, overtime you know, last night. 
Oh, we went way over time. Yeah, I'm usually in bed by 10, and the end time for the karaoke is 11, and we went to 11.20. <laughs> and then I had to say goodbye to everybody because I want them to come back. And yeah, and, yeah I, and then I had to spin down, and so I didn't get to bed until like quarter of one. <laughs> it was just like, oh, mama's butt's dragging. <laughs> <laughs> My butt's on the floor today. <laughs> I'm old and I didn't drink at all. I'm drinking water all night long. I'm just, I, I have no excuse for it except I'm freaking tired because freaking I danced. Tired. I danced and I was up past my bedtime. So <laughs> that's what old is, you know, it takes us longer to recuperate. Yes. <laughs> Trust yes. me. Mitch and I are in bed for like nine 30, 10 o'clock. And it's kind of yeah. like by eight 30, some nights we're even looking at the watch going, you want to know? Yeah. All right, cool. We're going to bed. Yeah. <laughs> We're been there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we're sad, but yeah, that's what it is. But that's how you not be sleep deprived too. So, you know, you got to honor your body and not just be like, I'm old. No, I'm not old. I'm going to stay up. Damn it. No, no, yeah. no. Honor your body. Honor your body. So, um, anyway, today, uh, it, it's very interesting because we, we did a little juggle in the, in the, um, scheduling. Mm hmm and I changed out some of the topics uh, last week, and I left today empty, and I didn't have anything planned. And so my assistant contacted me this morning and was like, um, uh, I'm trying to put this together, and uh, what, what are we talking about today? And I went, oh, yeah, right, I left that empty, didn't I? And it turns out I had a call yesterday afternoon with someone who's just getting her business off the ground, and... I really wanted to talk about the type of things that she and I talked about on that call because I think it's so important for people who are just getting their spiritual business off the ground to have a real grounding in the basic principles of business because nobody teaches them. I mean, unless you're going to college for it, you know, you just, there aren't, there are a million classes in how to do your marketing and a million classes and how to do time management and, you know, all that other crap. But nobody comes in and says, here's how you structure your offer. Well, they do, but it's hard to find it. it they are few and far between. And in fact, uh, one of the best places I have found so far for free information, which most people who are just getting started need is uh, Alex Hormosi, who he runs a business that takes businesses from $3 million to $30 million. And his tagline is so that you only have to get rich once, right? And there we go. Helps okay. Exit, I, could right? do, I could do that. Yeah, that wouldn't suck, right? And suck. so, uh, but what he does is he gives away all the information that he feels you need in order to get to $3 million. And so we are including a link to his website, to that free training on his website for you to go check that out. I'm going to talk about some concepts uh, specific to the, to the spiritual world. And then I want you to go to his site and get more detailed information because it's, it's lots of videos that are, you know, 15, 20 minutes long each. Okay. So all for free. Got to love it. Right. So, um, the first thing I want to say is I beg of you, I plead of you, I, I, I implore you, please, please, please do not start your business with a $25 class as your basic structure. The only way that you will ever make a living doing that is if you have a huge, and I mean huge following on social media, right? And when I say huge, I mean like 100,000 people or more, okay? And the reason for that is, let's do some basic math, okay? I'm gonna pull up my calculator right now. And so if you have 100,000 followers, the average, so an average conversion rate, you know, like mediocre, really sort of normal rate is one to 3% conversion off of that number. Okay. So let's say it's, and now I always like to be conservative in my estimates. So I always go for the bottom of the line so that you 
don't end up sort of squeaking. You, your your estimates are puffed, and and then you go and actually do it, and then you're like, oh, hold on, come on, I can't pay rent, right? So I'm going to go with the one percent because that's conservative, right? And so one percent is conversion rate, meaning going from your followers to paying you money for something, yes. your customers. Okay. Yes. Yes. And so if 1% of 100,000 people buy, okay, and you're selling a $25 course, you're going to make 25 grand. Okay. I don't know many people who can live on that. And I don't know many people who have $100,000 or 100,000 followers. Right. So, you know, this is the problem is that you know, most of us have eh, 250 to 500 people that we know, right? Now, if you've been on social media for a hot minute, you might have several thousand. Let's say you got 20,000, right? Mm -hmm. Now, 20,000 times that same 1% times that $25, you're talking five grand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you do that every single month, can you get away with it? Yeah, you can. It, 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 it's okay. But are you going to make a lot of money? No, that's 60 grand a year. Okay, so what I'm going to say to you is the, the $25 classes are only profitable, one, if you have a huge following, that you can only make a living on them if you have a huge following, and two, if you are upselling from that to a higher priced program. So you can do a $25 course if you have a back end sale that's you know a couple grand, five grand, something like that, then you can make a living doing that. Now, let me let me say this: if you are doing twenty five dollar programs, what you have to recognize is about seventy to eighty percent of the people in the room can't afford that bigger program. If you're doing free programs, ninety five percent can't afford it. Okay, so I, I want you to be really clear. You will not make a living running a charity. Okay, and let me be clear. If you are not charging enough money to make a living and you are letting people in for free or on trade before you've made a living, then you are running a charity, not a business. And these are the biggest mistakes that I see spiritual entrepreneurs make. Okay, that and hoping that somebody will just magically ask for their services. That never happens either. I mean, it does, but it's like one time out of a thousand that somebody will just say, oh my God, I have to work with you, right? So you also have to have a plan for how you're going to convert them into your services and a plan for how you're going to price your services. You need to know how many hours a week do you want to work? And based on how many hours a week you want to work, which, by the way, includes your marketing, your delivery of your services, your delivery of any pre-stuff pre that you're doing, like, you know, if you're doing intro courses or whatever to get people into the stuff that you do, anything that you're doing networking-wise, all your social media, everything, right? So you got to figure that your services are going to be delivered about 30 to 50% of the time, depending upon how effective you are with your marketing. So 30 to 50% of the time that you spend working will be spent delivering your services, which means that you need to account for an hourly pay rate of double or more, double to three quarters of what your hourly time is, right? So, so if let's say for instance, uh, I'm going to do easy numbers. Let's say you're charging $100 a session, okay? And I know a lot of you are out there still charging 60 bucks, and I'm just going to whack you upside the head because I charged $60 for a psychic reading in 2000, okay? This is 20, almost 25 years later, okay? Mm -hmm. it, cost of living has gone up. Your prices should have been raised by now, okay? So, and I was on average with everybody else. I was not charging more than everybody else. I was doing exactly what everybody else was doing. So don't say, oh, well, Kelly, you were charging more. I was not. Okay. That was the going rate. Okay. So let's say you're doing a hundred, hundred dollars a session, right? And you are working. Um, let's say that you're working, uh, what, like 30, 40 hours a week. 
Let's do full time. Right. Okay. 40 hours a week at a hundred dollars. But, but remember out of those 40 hours, only 30 to 50% of them are being spent delivering on services that you're charging a hundred dollars an hour for. Right. So if we're going to say 30 to 50, we're going to average 40%, right? Right. So you let's say 40% of your time is delivering services. So 40 times 40% is 16 hours a week that you are actually delivering on services. Okay. Okay. So I'm actually so, given, I'll use myself as a, as a guinea pig, right? So mm -hmm. I'm giving Reiki to someone where they're having a Reiki session, hour, hour and a half, whatever. So I'm deliverables. Right. I'm doing 16 hours. Right. Okay. And then the other 34 hours mm -hmm. or no, 24 hours are being spent doing marketing and admin and accounting and all the stuff you have to do to run a I'll business. I'll back off the right? stuff that we all hate to do. All of it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so 16 hours is all you're actually getting paid on, right? Mm -hmm. So times that $100 an hour, which, you know, you might be a little higher or lower, but that's sort of the midline Just... of what I hear people tell me they're charging right now. Yep. Um, it's, it's anywhere from 60 to 150. So that's hundred is good number. So that's $1,600 a month or a week, a week, a week. Mm -hmm. Um, now, but let's do the math on that backwards, right? So we got $1,600 a week divided by 40 hours of time spent working. You're actually making $40 an hour for all your time. Okay. So you want to be aware of that. That's one of the things that uh, spiritual entrepreneurs don't account for and, and new entrepreneurs in general don't account for it. They're, they're like, Oh, well, you know, I'm going to work 40 hours a week. I'm going to make 40 times a hundred. No, that's not what you're going to make. You're only getting paid for the time that you're delivering. Right mm -hmm. now, this is one of the arguments for having online classes and group programs where you can scale, where you're not trading your time for money. Right. But in the beginning, most of us start out trading our time for money and that's okay. Okay. But you got to know what you're expecting, right? So, you know, if you can get 16 hours a week, that's a, that's a good deal. Now, what you have to ask yourself is, is 16 hours a week going to wear me out? Right? Because yeah. it's 40 hours a week in actuality, 16 of which are spent doing heavy duty energy work. Right? So you have to get realistic with yourself and say, how many hours can I actually do this? Because 16 hours a week divided by five days in a week, which a lot of us work more hours, more days than that. Right. So, um, then you're looking at 3.2 hours a day. So can mm -hmm. you reasonably and sustainably do three hours a day for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. Right. Of five days work. a week or if five I'm doing days four days a week and I want my weekends off, that's four hours a day. Right. So that means I'm um, hands on doing stuff with a four client hours a day. four hours a yes. day. And that <laughs> means that there's, you know, 15 to 30 minutes of slush time in between each session. And, you know, so basically you're going to be working six hours because there's got the, the slush time of setup mm -hmm. and tear down and, you know, the in between time and whatever. Right. And if so I this have is to drive have to, to them get... and come back. Right. Yeah. We're not doing that. Don't right. do that. <laughs> Don't ever go to the client unless you charge them like two or three times what you normally charge. Don't go to them. Yeah. Okay. That is just going to be a huge waste of your time. That's called and, convenience you know, fee. You're paying yeah. premium. <laughs> Absolutely. And they should because it's a huge amount of your time. Yeah. Right. And I drive so, a diesel truck, so you're going to pay for my, my gas, honey. <laughs> <laughs> With the price of gas nowadays, you're paying for my gas. <laughs> yeah. So, and then there's other things to consider too, right? So, you know, renting space. This was another conversation we had. This person had a, a, a an extra space. She had an extra building on her property and she's like, oh, well, I'll just do it out of there. And I said, well, I said, could you rent that space out? And she was like, well, yeah, I could. I said, rent out the space and then rent space that you need to do your work because you're only going to be doing stuff for maybe six hours a week or a month rather. Right. You're only going to run classes like two, three times a month. Right. Mm -hmm. So rent out the space, get the full amount of the rent for that, rent it out to somebody else. So you have income coming in and then use that money to rent a space for two hours here and there from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Right. You got to look at what is the best use of what I have. 
right? Look at your resources and look at the best use of your resources. Do not rent a space full time when you're only going to be using it part time. It makes no sense to do that. Your yeah. most expensive overhead costs are always your rent. So you're better off to rent space on an hourly basis from somebody else for a higher rate and then only rent it for the time you're actually going to use it because most of us aren't using it very often, right? So that's another thing to keep in mind, right? Now, my very strong encouragement to you is that before you launch any business that you sit down with a spreadsheet. I love my spreadsheets. And, and you run an, an analysis, right? You go, okay, if I have this many people in my, you know, this many clients and I see them this often and I do this many hours and blah, 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 blah. How much money am I bringing in? Okay. If I know that and I'm paying, you know, I've got a client coming in, I charge them a hundred dollars. I've paid $20 for the space for an hour, you know, okay. I've got an $80 profit on that except it's not a profit because you got to pay yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So I got an $80 margin on that. And then I pay right. myself and then my business has to have some money go into it to keep it going, right? Because I have to pay for online services and marketing and all that other stuff. And right? taxes. Mm -hmm. And taxes and all of that. Yes. Yeah. So, um, although taxes come out post profit, so that's a different yeah. thing. But yeah. anyway, um, and so you look at that and then look at what your, all of your overhead costs are. I pay X amount of money. You know, I, I pay, you know, 30 bucks a month for my mailing list service. I pay, you know, 50 bucks a month for, you know, whatever, right. What are my credit card fee charges? You know, that's 3% of all of your charges. If people aren't paying you cash, blah, blah, blah. So you look at all of the expenses, everything you outlay, your gas, everything, right? And then you look at the bottom line and you see, because on average, the average business will net about 50% of what you make. So now that money, that $1,600 a week isn't looking so great. Now it's $800 a week net. Yeah, all the expenses just kind of chewed all on it and everything. Mm -hmm. And I would say, and for sure have a separate checking account and business Absolutely. account. Do, don't commingle yes. your stuff going, oh, I know it's just set aside in my, in there and I use it. Don't do that. Don't commingle don't your stuff. That. You're going to pull your hair out and look like Kojak. Don't do that. Well, no. and your accountant is going to slap you silly. Mm -hmm. So, Completely. yeah, don't do that. So the you know, so there's, this is the planning part, right? As we look at that now, God forbid, you're one of the people who wants to open a center. Okay. Please God, unless you are in a very affluent area, please do not kill yourself by opening a center. One opening a center is a freak ton of work. I mean, you are constantly organizing the people who are coming in and renting space from you, you are constantly trying to get people to run classes. You're constantly dealing with customers coming and going. You have to deal with cleaning fees and, or cleaning yourself. And then you're like, you're a janitor on top of everything else. Right. And you know, there's always something going wrong with the property or whatever, you know, how do you deal with, do you have to be there every time somebody comes in or do you have a lockbox set up? And what happens if somebody keeps the key from the lockbox and the next person gets there and they can't get in? I'm telling you, I've seen it all, right? So please God, if you are have, having thoughts of this, please don't. Okay. Um, much as I love centers, uh, you know, they're, they're very hard to run well. And it, as your first business, it's really a bad idea as your first business because there are so many moving parts that it will make you tear your hair out and you won't sleep. Okay. Same thing for a retreat center. If you're thinking of a retreat center and you've never run one before, been part of the running one before, please do not open a retreat center. They are so much harder than you think they are to run. Okay. As a first business, it's a bad idea. Okay. I'm not saying nobody should run a retreat center. I'm saying that you need to know your shit to run either a retreat center or a center well. And you need to be a really organized person to do both. And you, you better be good at hospitality, right? You better be good at self-care. 
because if you get cranky and bitchy with even one person, uh, it's not good. And it's don't not think good, you're going to make everybody today's. happy. You're not. Yeah. So, and, and they've got to have excellent boundaries and there's all That's sorts of things, thing. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is not a good business as a first business, right? So, yeah. you know, and this stick go, with practitioner. Yeah. And even as a practitioner, let's say, because what came to my mind whenever you're talking about like a center two, same kind of scenario where, oh, I'm going to go rent my space, but, oh, all that I can find available is something with, like, I'm going to make this up, three suites. So I can use one and then rent out the other two. Let me tell you what a nightmare that's going to be. One, yes, I've you're seen not going to go to hell and yeah. basket many times. Yeah, it's like you know having uh buying a duplex and you're going to live in one and you know rent out the other. You hope that your renters are there. That's not a guarantee. And you hope you right. get along with them. That's not a guarantee. And then guess what? Everything that breaks, you're right there. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> so all of it. Yeah. So for a first time yeah. business, that would be a that would be a bad thing too. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So, you know, these are the things not to do, right? So the other thing that I said is, is don't shoot for what you think you need to get by in terms of income. Okay. You want to structure your business in such a way that it will make you double what you think you need to get by. And why do I say double and not more? And I say that because you will have a hard time initially wrapping your head around making that kind of money if you never have before. And it is important to put, put stretch goals on yourself, but it's important not to make them bigger stretch goals than they, than, than feels like it could be possible to you. Right? So if you're used to making $2,500 a month, you're not going to think that $10,000 a month is possible. You're, it's going to seem pie in the sky ish to you initially. So you make your goal five grand when you hit five grand and now five grand seems reasonable. Then you make your goal 10 grand, right? I'm not saying you never get there, but I'm saying get there in stages. One is that it's going to get you to be realistic about what can be done and what can't and, and not go into fantasy pie in the sky thinking, which a lot of us are guilty of because we had childhoods where we escaped into our fantasies. And so fantasy thinking is our deal. It's our deal, right? It's, it's our go-to. So, you know, and before you launch anything, run it by a business owner, you know, who has been in the business for a while and say, this is what I'm thinking about doing and ask them to pick it apart because that can be some of the most valuable advice that you can get. I still do that to this day. I wrote a sales page for a new program the other day and I handed it to my, my group. I have a group of, of business owners that I, I do a networking thing with and I handed it to the group and they ripped it to shreds. <laughs> I mean, they just, they eviscerated it. I was so proud too. I was like, look at what I did. Isn't it awesome? And they were like, no, it doesn't feel like you at all. It feels very corporate. There's no fun in this. And I was like, but, but I was so right to spend two days on that. And there was, I, I was like, what? You were supposed to tell me it was awesome. Be careful what you wish for. But I didn't tell them that. I told them right. to tell me what you think, which was the important thing. Mm. Always, always, always run it by another business. Because they were right. They were right. I have not put the sales page out because I was, I was, it sounded terrible. It did not sound like me. And I don't know why I, I was just toasty, I guess, when I was writing it. I don't know. But yeah. And, and I looked at it and was like, oh, yeah, you're right. That's a great sales page for somebody who's not me. Uh, like, so, you know, these are the things that they, they will point out to you. So uh, the last thing I'm going to say is, is please pick up a copy of the book Profit First. We've talked about this before on the podcast. I'm going to say it again because it is so important and it, it will revolutionize the way that you do business. Um, and, you know, going back to the... I, I, Actually, I want to go back to the goal thing again. The other reason you double your intention is because your business is probably going to have 50% expenses, right? You, you, you need to double what your nut is in order to make your nut every month, right? Yeah. Because you, you're going to have 50% expenses. 
And so when you look at that, you're like, oh, that's just break even, right? That's the other reason you double it. Yeah. And so. And you, you have know, to know and, your break even. Yes. And be very careful about what expenses you commit to. It's very easy to end up spending a huge amount of money in, you know, $50 here, 20 bucks there, you know, $15 there, whatever, right? Because you're subscribing to all these different services and you never sit down and look at how much money that actually is. I, in my business right now, I'm currently in the process of unsubscribing from about eight or 10 different services and going into a single platform that will do all of those things for me for just a hundred dollars a month. It's going to save me several thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be a process to transition over, but it's going to save me several thousand dollars a year and a whole lot of complexity in the way that my business functions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at all levels, you're going to look at how much does it cost me and how do I streamline my expenses and how, and, and make smart choices. Don't, don't buy the budget thing because it's the budget thing Buy the, the, buy the most expensive thing you can afford that does the job well enough, right? Not the, all the bells and whistles that you can grow into in 10 years. T I promise you 10 years down the road, that program won't be there. You'll be using a different one. You do not need that program. Okay. So you buy the thing that does what you needed to do right now. And then if you need to, you upgrade or you switch platforms later. If you're doing anything in the online space, you will be constantly switching platforms. You'll be constantly upgrading your systems every 20, 18 to 24 months. You have to refresh your website and you got to reassess your tech because that's how fast the tech world moves. So there's always something that you're going to be shifting. So if you do not like constantly shifting tech, running a tech company is not your best choice. Running an online business is not your best choice or, or get a partner who loves tech and then run the online business and you do the delivery, right? Because the tech will be constantly changing and that's just a fact of life. I've been, I've been running an online business since 2004 and I can tell you from that very long time frame <laughs> that this is the way it is and it's not changing anytime soon. It has been this way for the last 20 years. Yeah. So, um, you know, just know that going in. Okay. So I, I know this has not been terribly woo woo. <laughs> And this one isn't meant to be woo-woo, guys. It really isn't. It, you know, it, you cannot be fully woo unless you're fully grounded, right? You need to have a balance between the, the grounding and the woo. So this is your grounding point for your business. This, this one is not a fun one, but it's an important one, right? You guys heard me do the website uh, review with, with uh, Kevin, I think was his name. Um, and heard me talk about, you know, how do you figure out your, your hourly rate and all of that, right? I will say to you, this is the other thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to add one more thing to the mix and then I'm going to let us go because we're a little over time already, but I have so much to say on this subject. Okay. All right. So the other thing I'm going to say is that if you deliver a service, you will make less money than if you deliver a result. Okay. I'm going to say it again. If you deliver a service, you will make less money than if you deliver a result. So do not do just a Reiki session. Do something that solves the problem. And your repeat clients are cheaper than getting new clients. So you're better off. The client is better off. You're better off. Everybody's better off if you deliver an outcome and you say, okay, for, uh, you know, we're going to clear your chakras and we're going to, you know, what the client comes to you with, I've got back pain or whatever, whatever. And you say, okay, so I'm going to clear your back pain. I think it's going to take somewhere between three and six sessions because I, I can feel into it. There's, there's some past life stuff in there. There's some trauma in there. There's some energy work to be done, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, I can feel it all. It's going to be somewhere between three and six sessions. And I'm going to give you a package price, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be 
you know, a thousand dollars or something like that. Right. And you say, we're going to do as many sessions as it takes for us to fix it. Now you're delivering a result, right? And the person goes, Oh, at the end of this, my back is going to feel better. And you go, yeah, back's going to feel better. I'll just keep working on you until it does. And that's, that's what I'm delivering is your back will feel better, right? So at that point, even if you only do it in three sessions, you've paid, they've paid for an outcome and they're like, Oh, I got my outcome. And somebody whose back hurts all the time, thousand right. bucks is a steal of a deal for that to be better. Right. right. So this is what I'm saying is, is don't sell packages of, of, you know, there's, there's three different levels, right? There's, I'm doing a single service in a single moment. There's a, I'm going to sell you a package of services. I'm going to sell you, you know, six sessions for, you know, a discounted price off the main, off, mm -hmm. off of a single set mm -hmm. price, right? That's a, that's a package of services. It's still mm -hmm. selling your time for money and it's still selling a service. It's just offering a discount on the service, which I don't recommend. And then the final one is delivering on a, an outcome. And the wonderful thing about delivering on an outcome is that you can charge more for that, which means that you have more funds to be able to make that actually work. So you might have a, a stock of foam rollers in your, in your space that you give away to clients. They're 10 bucks, right? If you're charging a thousand dollars for an outcome, you can afford to give a $10 foam roller away. Whereas if you're charging 60 bucks for a session, you can't afford to do that. And you tell them, Oh, go get the foam roller. And of course they don't. And so, cause it's too yeah. hard. Right. Yeah. And then they come back and you're like, why is your back not better? And they're like, Oh, did you get the foam roller? No, I forgot. You know? Yeah. Whereas if yeah. you just hand it to them, they're like, Oh, now I can do this. Right. Yeah. Thank so you so that much. is right. That it makes a big deal. It makes mm -hmm. a big difference. Right. And you can do that when you have, when you have charged enough to be able to provide a higher level of service. Right. And when you're providing a service at that level, you're not working 40 hours a week. You're now working 30. Right. And you've got an assistant who's working for you. So effectively the company is now working 50 hours a week, but you're only working 30 and only delivering on maybe 10. Right. Mm -hmm. But you're still making the same money. And okay. now you have the bandwidth to sit down and contemplate what's going on with this person's back and to energetically check in with them when they're not in the room and to be able to sit with yourself and consult with your guides and consult with your, your mentors and say, you know, I've got this problem. I'm trying to figure it out. I want to get a be the best result. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. Right now you have the time and the bandwidth to do that and to deliver at a higher level. Right. So this is what I'm saying. You know, people are like, Oh, you know, the money, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're charging too much. Blah, 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 blah. Here's the deal, right? If you don't charge enough money to have the bandwidth to do that kind of service, then you also don't charge enough money to have the space in your work to be able to take on the occasional pro bono client or trade client or whatever. And here's the other thing I'm going to tell you. I almost never, like almost never give away anything because for years I used to, and inevitably the people that you give it to, no matter how in, in much they say they're going to use it, they don't. Okay. They need to have skin in the game. Okay. So if you're going to do something on a sliding scale or, you know, give somebody something where they don't have to pay cash, you need to get an exchange. You need an energetic exchange. One, because you are creating karmic debt if you don't. And two, because they won't take it in, but to the level that they have invested. And so that's the thing, right? And the other thing I'm going to say is if you're going to do a trade, never do a trade with somebody that you would not pay for their services because you are paying for their services, right? So, uh, so that was going to be the, the question I'm hearing, but what about all those friends and family discounts that when I start my business, you know, they're going to come out the woodworks and aunt T90 is going to go, 
oh, well, just go see you because you family and she ain't going to charge you nothing. Because you know that's going to go around in the family, at least, you know, <laughs> the toxic ones. So how do you, what's your advice to handle those kind of situations? So friends and family. So for one, um, there's always going to be an a, uh, expectation imbalance when you're working on friends and family. Because your friends are going to expect you to take more care of them and charge them less. And you're going to expect them to pay you all and appreciate you, right? Yeah, yeah. Because they want to support your business, right? And that's how you frame it, by the way, is when they come to you, they, they say, oh, I need a session. Oh, thank you so much for supporting my business. I so appreciate your support of my business, Yes, right. Yes. And that sets the expectation that they're coming to you to support you, not that they're coming to you for a freebie. Set that's those boundaries. One. So that's a boundary, right? Now, if they absolutely have no money, they are family and you're going to have shit from the family for the rest of your freaking life. If you don't do this, then find another way for them to help you. Right. Testimonials. In the beginning, you're going to de be desperate for mm -hmm. testimonials. OK, tell them and most uh, I, I'm going to tell you, quite frankly, most of the people who come in for free or they write shit testimonials. So don't have them write it. Have you you talk to them about what their experience was and then you write it up and have them approve it because a testimonial should say this was my experience. I had this problem. I came to this person. They solved my problem and I feel this much better now. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what a good testimonial should say. Not, oh, you should go see so and so. She's great. OK, don't. That's a terrible testimonial. Yeah. Nobody can look at that testimonial and see themselves and say, oh, yes, this person has the answer to my problem. That's the goal of a testimonial is for that for someone else who's considering working with you to see the testimonial and see themselves in it and see that you have the solution. OK, mm -hmm. so, you know, they can pay you in a testimonial. And some work around the house, right? <laughs> the Same. testimonial my is grass not needs, My grass needs cutting. Hedges need trimming. Right. <laughs> yes. Something like that. They can, they can do social media posts for you. They can, you know, whatever, right? But they've got to do something. And my strong encouragement is that they do the thing before they get the service. Because once they get the service, they have no reason to do the thing, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And even the best of intentions, it's just how it works out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this yeah. has been a huge amount of information. Uh, again, not yeah. not woo woo. -y. <laughs> However, we do have, need the balance between you got to have the business sense in order to have your business to allow you to be able to do the woo woo. So right, got to have both of them. All Absolutely. right. Absolutely. So, what would be your ending? Oh, Kelly no, no, no. Oh, I got what? one more. I got one more thing. We're not done. Oh. We're not done. Thing. And no, it's, wait, it's, it's there's like, more. It's like the most important thing. So if you stop listening, you're, you're, you're screwed. So this will tell you that you need to listen to the end, right? So <laughs> because I forgot the most important thing. So the, the most important thing here is that I see so many spiritual entrepreneurs go in with like mushy, really mushy intentions, like horribly mushy intentions. They're like, oh, well, I want to, I want, I, I'm going to be a spiritual teacher. Okay. And yeah, you, you could do that sitting on your back porch and talking to anybody who walks by. That doesn't mean you're going to have a business, right? I'm going to be a spiritual teacher with, you know, five, you know, five dedicants. Okay. But you know, that's still not a business, right? 50 dedicants, still not a business. They could be all volunteer and do nothing, you know, pay, not pay you, right? It, you need to get crystal clear on what is the life that you want to lead, right? Do not make a plan for a business that works for the finances, but does not work for your lifestyle. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Do not make a plan for the business that works financially, but does not work for your lifestyle. If you know, like me, I'm a big freedom girl. I hate having my calendar completely scheduled to within an inch of my life. Makes me crazy. I hate sitting on Zoom calls for four hours in a row. Makes me nuts. Makes her cranky. Not, not even there. kidding. Makes her look cranky. It does make me stupid cranky. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I hate it. I hate it. And, 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 and I, my body hates it. I get on, my body aches when I do that. 
And so I don't design my business around it, right? When my business expands and, and people fill up my calendar with random stuff, because it's always the random stuff, because I've designed the business so that it's not that, right? Right. But it's always the random stuff that, you know, oh, I need a meeting with this person or that person or the other thing or whatever. I really pay attention to that. I audit my calendar at the beginning of every week and I say, okay, how much space is there between calls? And if there isn't enough, I reschedule stuff or I just don't do things. I cancel things. If I look at my calendar and I go, oh, if my body just goes, Ugh, I start canceling things. Okay. Because I need to respect my, my body. Right. So one you know, set up your business structure in such a way that it supports your way of being Two, get really clear about what your goals are. What do you want your financial goals to be like? How do you want to feel every day? How do you want to spend your time every day? Or, you know, how do you want to rotate days that you spend your time in different ways? Because I'm that person. I don't like to do the same thing every day and you may not either, but you know, what does your general week look like? right? How much time do you want to take off every year? Uh, and, and in what sort of chunks, right? Do you want to take a weekend every month? Do you want to take a month every quarter? You know, how do you want to take your time off? Right. And then, and then get really clear. So this is the other big, big, big piece, right? The universe is not your freaking parent. They do not get to pass judgment of what is good or bad for you. The universe is your partner and they are unconditionally loving and supportive of anything you choose. The, if what you are doing is not working, it is either because you have not committed to it, which is most of the time. And when I say commit, like I'm going to do this come hell or high water, right? I'm committing that I will be on this path for at least a year. If you're not willing to be on the path for at least a year, don't freaking do it. Do not throw spaghetti against the wall and hope it sticks. The universe is just going to look at you confused and go, wait, what? I thought we were doing this thing over here. We're doing this thing now? I thought oh. it was tacos. Why are we having spaghetti? Right. Yeah. And, and that's what happens mm. is that the universe gets confused. It takes a minute to readjust. And by the time it readjusts, you've thrown new spaghetti against the wall and have changed order in direction again. And it's like, wait a minute, what? And eventually it just goes, okay, when you figure it out, let me know, because I'm just going to sit here because, you know, this doesn't make any sense to me. Right. So you need to pick a path and commit to it. And so pick either it's path, because you not yes, pick what someone path. else expects of you to pick. <laughs> yes. And, and commit as in speak it out loud, follow through, do the things. Don't whine about the marketing. Just go do it. Don't, don't be like, Oh, I don't want to be a marketer. Blah, blah, blah. You know, marketing. Oh my God. I have so much to say on this subject. We're going to have to do more of these. We're going to have to do um, more of these. I'm, I'm not going to go down that road because that we'll, we'll be here for another hour. Anyway, the, uh, you know, the, the thing that you have to do is commit. Now there's one of two reasons why the universe may not be lining up. One is you didn't commit or two, it's time for you to change direction, but that only happens after you've committed for a long time. Okay. So it is not the universe saying, don't go this way. I mm -hmm. promise you. They don't say that unless you've already committed for a long time and it's time to change direction. So unless, and when I say a long time, years, years. Okay. So pick a path and commit. If you're just getting started, pick something, something that you are so passionate about that you can do it for the next two years minimum. Okay. And then watch the universe line up behind you, but make the commitment and say, I'm getting there come hell or high water. Not, Oh, is this the thing I should be doing? I don't know. Right. Get clarity. And then commit. Because you're going to be tested. Going, you sure oh, you yeah. want to do this? Are you sure? Absolutely. You really sure? <laughs> well, life is hard. Yeah. yeah. You know, life, life can be, it doesn't have to be hard all the time, but it is occasionally hard. Mm -hmm. And in business, it is hard more often than it, mm -hmm. it is in other ways. So, you know, it, it's the nature of the beast for things to be hard. 
and especially if you're starting something you've never done before, it's, it, it's very hard because you're, you're running in uncharted waters for you, right? Mm-hmm. This is why it's so important to have a mentor and do, do all of that thing, right? So this is the piece, okay? Please, please, please pick a path. Pick a path that is going to support you financially. Pick a path that is going to support you in your beingness. Pick a path that you can commit to for at least two years and then run headlong towards it. That is how you will be successful. And do not let other people tell you how you should be running your business, especially if they don't have one. Okay? Do not listen to people who have never run a business tell you how to run your business. And especially if they've never run a successful one. Okay. That would be, that'll be they, the equivalent of taking financial advice from broke people. Don't do that. Yes. Don't do that. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I believe in you. There's a reason why I'm doing these podcasts this year is because I believe in you. I know that you have the ability to, to step fully into your mission on this planet. I know you do. I also know it scares the living fuck out of you and that's okay. When I looked at my mission on the planet 25 years ago, it scared the living fuck out of me too. Okay. Now I feel okay about it. Okay. So you will get there. You will get there. Just, you just got to keep going and remember that it is not entirely your job to do the up leveling of the planet. There are a hundred thousand of us on the planet who are here to do that. We are all working together. You do not have to do this alone and you are not doing it alone, no matter how much you may feel like you are. Okay. I believe in you. You can do this. I know it's scary. I know it's hard, but you are smart and you are capable and you are amazing. Go out there and change the world. I love you. And that is the perfect ending for this podcast so that's all that we have time for this week folks tune in next time when kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy magic and the spirit world i'm jules here with kelly sparta and you have been listening to spirit sherpa so long y'all